welcome back to my channel so in this video i'll show you how to approach the next step algorithm for questions about precocious puberty because a lot of times it's confusing idiopathic versus central versus peripheral all these stuff so let's get started first off when i have a question mentioning a seven-year-old boy or let's say a six-year-old girl who started developing secondary sexual characters the first thing i think about is that this is a question about precocious puberty now what type of clinical picture can this patient come with for example in a boy they're gonna mention uh, development of pubic hair for example or axillary hair it, for example, uh, they might mention that the boy has increased in height. He's like above the 95th percentile in height, for example. For a girl, they might mention breast development. That's possible. They might mention that she has vaginal bleeding as a form of menarche, for instance. So I need to know, the first question I need to ask is whether this is a true precocious puberty or a false precocious puberty what does that mean is it truly due to gonadal maturity did her ovaries really work and start secreting estrogen or is it uh, just simple isolated uh, thalarche or isolated adrenarche is it just the adrenal axis that's developing or um, breast development alone without any form of estrogen coming out. So I need to know whether this girl's development or this boy's development is due to development of their gonads and secretion of sex hormones, whether it's estrogen or uh, testosterone in case of boys, or is it a, a simple isolated condition of just breast development or just adrenal development because we have different forms of pubertal development there's adrenarche thalarche pubarche and there is gonadal maturity gonadal maturity is the key to true precocious puberty so how can i confirm that we confirm that initially with something called bone age when sex hormones come out they lead to increased linear growth of bone. So whether it's estrogen or testosterone, the first thing that happens as a result or as an effect of these hormones is bone growth. Neither of thalarche nor adrenarche nor anything else other than gonadal development will result in bone growth. And so for this reason, I must do a wrist x-ray. If it shows that the bone age of this individual is beyond one year of his or her chronological age, let's say my child is six years old, for instance, but their bone age says that they're eight, that indicates advanced bone age and is a sign of gonadal maturity. It's a sign that there is estrogen being secreted in a girl or testosterone in a boy that there is sex hormones here working on the bone and causing advanced growth after this step of determining bone age and confirming that it's truly a precocious puberty because of sex hormone uh, production I want to know where these sex hormones came from is it central production or is it peripheral production and so that brings us to the next point is it central or is it peripheral precocious puberty we already know that it's true precocious puberty because we have sex hormones if we if bone age was normal to chronological age then it's false precocious puberty and it's just mere isolated thalarche isolated adrenarche and that's nothing to worry about rather if sex hormones arise and result in advanced bone age that is a true precocious puberty that i need to investigate now is it central or is it peripheral is the next question that i need to ask let's um try to work this up 
So how would I know whether it's the hypothalamus and pituitary development that resulted in FSH and LH production resulting in sex hormone development, or is it just the gonads having a tumor or something that keeps secreting sex hormones? The next step after bone age confirms to be advanced would be an LH, a basal LH level. If the basal LH level is high, that indicates it's probably a central precocious puberty. There is something up there in the pituitary or hypothalamus that's secreting um, gonadotropins, FSH and LH, and these stimulate the gonads to release sex hormones. Rather, if LH level is normal or low, this still doesn't rule out central precocious puberty. I still need to make sure 100% by something called the GnRH stimulation test. This is a dynamic test. Whenever we have anything in endocrine uh, problems that we want to confirm, we do something called dynamic tests. They are stimulation or suppression tests. In this case, it's a stimulation test. I administer GnRH in a pulsatile manner, the same way puberty starts, and see whether LH will rise. If LH levels rise beyond a certain level, beyond a certain cutoff, this is still high and is true central precocious puberty. So I can confirm that it's central either by a high basal LH level or by a stimulation test, GnRH pulsatile stimulation test, and if LH rises, it's also a central cause. Once I confirm this is central precocious puberty, I need to know where is the source. Now that I know it's up there in the brain, then I need to do a cranial MRI in that case. Now that I proved that it's central, the next step after a dynamic test will always be localization through imaging. Now that I know it's up there, then my imaging is going to be up there as well. I want to know is it a hypothalamic or a pituitary tumor. On the other hand, if the GnRH stimulation test or the beta LH test came out low, that means that the problem is not up there. The problem is actually down there in the gonads producing sex hormones autonomously and resulting in negative feedback inhibition on LH and FSH. And that's what led to a low LH level. The next step in that case is to localize where the problem is in the gonads. So my imaging is gonna be down there. I'm gonna do a pelvic abdominal ultrasound to reveal whether there is a gonadal tumor or an adrenal tumor or what not, all right? And so that's how I localize peripheral versus central precocious puberty. If I find nothing, whether on cranial MRI nor abdominal ultrasound, then this is called idiopathic precocious puberty. It could be idiopathic central or peripheral precocious puberty. And that usually happens, by the way, in obese children. There is several mechanisms by which obesity leads to precocious puberty that's beyond our scope now. Additionally, I can also do hormonal tests. Let's say the adrenal is the source. So I can do levels of DHEA, adrenal androgens, and stuff like that. Let's say there is a peripheral tumor um, in the testes, for example, producing beta HCG. So I can do HCG levels, right? I can do testosterone level. All this stuff, but only after localization. Is it central or is it peripheral? So to summarize, the first question, is it true or is it false precocious puberty? And that's going to be through a bone age wrist x-ray. Okay, that's the first step. The second step, is it central or is it peripheral precocious puberty? And that's going to be through LH basal level or LH level after a GnRH stimulation test. The third step is to localize. Localization is through imaging. It depends on the results of the second step. 
If the second step shows it's central, then the imaging is going to be a cranial MRI. If the second step shows it's peripheral, then the imaging is going to be a pelvic abdominal ultrasound. Anything else comes later, whether it's going to be hormonal levels or whatnot. All right, guys, hope this video helped. Let me know what you think. All the best, guys.